So say I give you the system of equations. Starts with x plus y is equal to negative 1. Then 2x minus z is equal to 3. And finally, y plus 2z is equal to negative 1. And I want you to solve using Framer's rule. Oops. So, generally, um, I, want, I want you to note that the system, although it has three variables, not all three variables are present in each equation. So actually, I think it helps a little bit to rewrite the, set, the system of equations like this. x plus y. And since there's a z missing, I'm going to write 0 times z is equal to negative 1. Now note, I didn't change the equation because 0 times anything is going to be 0. Um, so I want to do that with the second one. So 2x plus 0y, since there's no y term, minus z, is equal to 3. And then for the third equation, we put 0x plus y plus 2z is equal to negative 1. So now we're in a better position where we can write um, our determinants with a little bit more ease. So recall Kramer's rule. The solutions are given by x is dx over d, y is dy over d, and then z is dz over d. So knowing that, let's compute our determinants. So the first one we should work on is d. And d is found by writing out the coefficients for each of the variables. So the first column is going to be the coefficients in x, which is 1, 2, 0. The second column is going to be the coefficients in y. And the last column is going to be the coefficients in z. So now solving, I'm going to use expansion of minors. And um, generally, the best thing to do is to pick the column or row with the most zeros or with the smallest num with the smallest smallest positive numbers right so it seems like our best bet here would actually be the first row so how we do expansion of minors is we write down each of the elements and then we write down their minors multiplied so uh, let's remember if we want to find the minor of the first term, for example, what we do is delete the column and row, and then we write the 2 by 2 determinant of the numbers left over. So what's left over here would be the first column is 0, 1, and then the second column is negative 1, 2. So that's how we find the minor for the first element. So then for the second element, the minor is going to be 2, 0, negative 1, 2. And finally, the third element is going to be 0. And remember, 0 times anything is going to be 0, so we can just forget about this, right? We don't have to write it down. And finally, how we connect these two terms left over is we look at the sine array. So remember the sine array, you start with a plus, and then you alternate signs going across the row and down the column, and then you continue alternating until you have it so that your no two pluses or two minuses are next to each other, basically. And so since we're expanding across the first row, we know that our signs are going to be plus, minus, and then plus, but the last term isn't there anymore. So now we solve. So this becomes 1 times 2, 0. Remember, uh, a 2 by 2 determinant is solved by cross-multiplying and then taking the difference. So 0 times 2 is 0, minus negative 1. And then this becomes 1 times 4 minus zero. Remember, as long as you have one zero, it doesn't matter how many non-zero terms you multiply it by, you're still going to get zero at the end. So this becomes one times zero minus negative one, so it's zero plus one, minus one, oops, one times four. So we get one minus four, which is negative 3. Great, so we found D. Let's, uh, let's box it in red just so, to kind of keep track of what's going on here. So now that we found D, our next step is to find DX. 
So dx is found by replacing the coefficients of x with the constant terms and then writing the coefficients of y and the coefficients of z as normal. So dx is going to be the, the constant terms, so one, negative 1, 3, negative 1, and then the y coefficients as the second column, and then the z coefficients as the third column. So now we expand. Uh, so let's see. It looks like the row, the, the column that's going to give us the least amount of trouble is going to be the second column because there's sort of negative numbers everywhere else. Um, so let's expand by the second column. So we're going to write 1, 0, 1. And then the minor of 1, you get rid of the row and the column that it's in. So you have 3, negative 1, negative 1, 2 left over. For the zero term, we don't need to write anything. We don't need to, to waste our time since zero times anything is going to be zero. And finally, one, the last term, the, its minor is negative one, three, and zero, negative one. And then finally, we connect by the sine array. Now, since it's the second column that we're looking at, the signs are going to be minus plus minus. So it's minus here, plus for the zero term, and then minus for the last term. And since the zero term doesn't exist, then we can just get rid of all this. So it's going to be negative one times this two by two, minus one times the other two by two. So we get negative one times the determinant of this, which is six minus one, then minus one times one minus zero. So we get minus one times six minus one, which is five, minus one times one. So we have minus five minus one. So dx finally gives us negative six. Now for dy. How we write dy is that we replace this time, let's go back up, replace the y coefficients with the constant terms. So the x's are the same. The x's are, well, the, the first column is the x coefficients, is what I meant to say. And then the second column we replace with the constant terms. And then the last column is just the z coefficients. So now we expand again, and looks like the first column is going to be our best bet. So we have 1, 2, and then 0, we'll just write. So the minor of 1 is 3, negative 1, negative 1, 2. The minor of 2 is negative 1, 3, 0, oops, excuse me, that is incorrect. Um, which I, I hope you can see. So the minor of 2 uh, is 1, 0 as the first row, and then negative 1, 2 as the second row. And then finally, the 0 minor, we don't have to compute since 0 is, is going to give us 0. And then finally, connecting with the sine array, we have plus, minus, and then plus that 0 term. So simplifying, this becomes 6 minus 1. I, I didn't bother writing the 1 that we multiply by since it's not going to make that much of a difference, or any difference, to be to be honest. And then minus 2 times this ter determinant, which is negative 2 minus 0. So 6 minus 1 is 5, minus 2 times negative 2, that's 5 plus 4. So we get positive 9 for our dy. So finally, our last determinant is dz. Well, let's go back up. dz is found by replacing the z coefficients with the constant terms and then writing the x coefficients and the y coefficients as usual. So the first column is going to be 1, 2, 0. The second column is going to be the coefficients of y, which are 1, 0, 1. And then the last one, the last column is going to be the constant term. So now we expand. And now it looks like the second column again is our winner. 
since it's got the most number of zeros and, and the smallest positive numbers. So let's do that. Let's write down the elements and their minors. So the minor of 1 is 2, 0, 3, and 1. The minor of 0 we don't have to bother with. And the last term is going to be 1, 2, negative 1, 3. And then finally you connect using the sign array. Remember the second column is minus plus minus. And since the 0 is not going to be helpful, then we're just going to get rid of it. So what's left over is minus 1 times negative 2 minus 0 minus 1 times 3 minus negative 2. So simplifying right and then minus 1 times minus 2 is positive 2 minus 5 so this gives us negative 4. So great, we found d, dx, dy, and dz, and now we're in a position where we can actually solve the system. So x, if you recall, it's dx over d. So let's go all the way back up. So d is negative 3, and dx is negative 6. So negative 6 over negative 3, that's positive 2. y is dy over d. And d is, is negative 3 as we found. What's y? I can't remember. Oh, dy, sorry, is 9. So we have 9 over negative 3, which gives us negative 3. And then finally, z, which is dz over d. Well, dz is negative 3, and d is negative 3, which simplifies to 1. So great, we've solved for x, y, and z, and we want to write our solution in terms of the order triple x comma y comma z so we're gonna get the solution is 2 comma negative 3 comma 1